Yeah, I think uh, the the ketogenic and and uh, even the the ca carnivore uh, diet uh, these are very good elimination diets. Yes. So you can you can starve uh, specific microbes if you have uh, overgrowth of uh, so called uh, non not beneficial microbes. The then uh, one of the best ways is to starve them. And then uh, limiting the the availability of uh, of glucose is one of the the best ways to to starve uh, these microbes because all uh, both uh, uh, pathogenic or opportunistic pathogen uh, fungi and bacteria uh, love to gorge on on glucose. So when you have uh, uh, especially uh, quick deliveries of uh, simple glucose. Uh, into the into the small intestines, uh, these guys have a first uh, take on on what's uh, coming in, and, uh, and they love to gorge, and then uh, they can suppress other more beneficial. Uh, I don't really like this beneficial or or harmful uh, point of bacteria because, for example, the E. coli, uh, a typical uh, commensal of of the human microbiome. Uh, you can have very different strains or even the same strain can uh, behave differently in different uh, contexts. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the problem with the microbiome research, that it's really the, the function, how it works and, uh, and what niche it uh, goes into that, that really matters and not, uh, not a specific uh, species or, 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 uh, or genus or whatever of, uh, of bacteria. You can say that, oh, bifidobacteria are good. Uh, it, it doesn't mean anything to me. It's, it's. Uh, I think it's just nonsense, or 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 E. coli is is bad. No, we we know even uh, probiotic strains of of E. coli. It's it's not it's not absolutely not simple, and that's that's the, the simplification which I find uh, dangerous in in microbiome research. That everybody tries to jump on that. Uh, let's eat this and that fermented foods, and then uh, let's let's uh, take these uh, uh, probiotics. Because it's full of uh, uh, lactobacilli and, and full of uh, bifidobacteria, and, and these are inherently good. No, that's that's not the case. Uh, uh, the, the recent study showed, for example, that that uh, ketones, when uh, you are on a ketogenic diet, where you have high blood uh, ketones, these specifically inhibit the growth of bifidobacteria. So then ketones do uh, enormous damage. Mm. For sure, no, absolutely not. It's 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 just a different context. So it seems that when you are on a, on a ketogenic diet, on when you are uh, you are doing a extended fast, for example, uh, you don't need the bifidobacteria. Then then the bifidobacteria would send signals which are inappropriate. So the body tells them, OK, guys, uh, pull back a little bit because uh, there is a different context and the, and, uh, the new system uh, actively regulates uh, the composition of the of the microbiota. So we to 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 enforce high bifidobacteria without uh, considering context is just uh, stupid because it's, it's biology is always uh, very strongly contextual. So I, my, usually my first question is, when somebody claims something, okay, in what context? Thanks. <laughs> yeah, you did mention the uh, the carnivore diet, and yeah. people swear by it these days. Um, some people do it for years uh, and intend to do it for the rest of their life. But one of the one of the probably most commonly asked questions about the carnivore diet is how do like meat-based foods feed the bacteria because we know that the bacteria need fiber um so how how do you feed your gut bacteria they're there to live with you they're part of you how do you feed them if you are only eating meat and yet people remain healthy on a meat-based diet so how, how does that work yeah that that's uh that's when you have important important observations and then uh, you, uh, I mean, not you, I'm, I'm generalizing uh, here. Uh, then you try to 
pull some some smart things because because we know that it, this is true this is fact so we have to generalize and this has to be uh, true in this context as well well uh, partly i think it's it's right because the bacteria has to be fed on something but uh, we have to ask uh, some important questions what is fiber in the first place what, what is fiber uh, what if we define fiber as a feed for bacteria and then uh, bacteria can feed on uh, animal uh, molecules, uh, animal source molecules, such as uh, chondroitin, for example, or, or collagen. These are well established uh, food so for feed sources for, for bacteria. It's, it's a little known fact that uh, some old studies when when uh, not not very old because it's about the microbiome, so it's not old uh, in terms of uh, microbiota research. Um, some researchers looked at uh, the, the microbiome of uh, carnivores, like the cheetah and, and these uh, animals, and they found out that uh, uh, they, they tend to eat most of the prey. So uh, when, when uh, smaller carnivores, for example, uh, a cat, uh, catch catches a mouse it eats the whole mouse usually or just uh, leaves the, the head or something which is really not uh, digestible so there is the fur going in all connective tissues going in and, and all bones small bones everything is going in and uh, curiously enough uh, these uh, can uh, act as, uh, as uh, fibers so the microbiota of a, of a carnivore can synthesize uh, these uh, short chain fatty acids uh, from these animal uh, compounds. So when you eat whole small fish, for example, or you eat connective tissues, especially um, cartilage or, or uh, other connective skin uh, and the subcutaneous uh, tissues, uh, many indigenous people highly regard, for example, the, the intestines. And, and, and then uh, the, the, the herbivores or vegetarians or vegans or whatever we call them come along and, and claim that ah, that's because uh, the fiber uh, and, the, and the good bacteria are in the, in the intestines. Uh, I'm not sure. The, 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 the intestine is a huge amount of uh, connective tissues. And you, you have all this mucus, for example. And then uh, this is uh, another part of the answer to your question that uh, Mucus is uh, partly uh, synthesized and released by epithelial cells of, of, of the, the intestines so that uh, they feed the bacteria. And the composition of uh, mucus uh, has a huge impact on, on, on uh, what bacteria can adhere and, and feed off uh, the, the mucus. And of course, it's, it's a problem when you have a this biosis, so you have a unfavorable composition of bacteria and they have nothing to eat, just this mucus. And then they can eat more uh, quickly than uh, how you produce it. And then uh, your intestinal layer, the protection becomes too thin. But I think that's, that's one context when you have already a uh, poor composition of bacteria and then uh, your diet is void of uh, dietary fiber. This is not necessarily the case when you don't have the the unfavorable composition of bacteria uh, so you can produce uh, ample amounts of uh, this mucus to feed uh, the bacteria what do you think happens when you fast for for days or, or some people for weeks everybody says it's healthy how can it be healthy without dietary fiber <laughs> it's it's nonsense it's a different context so we we should be looking at uh, what happens in that context to explain how it works and why it is not uh, the, this uh, that detrimental what uh, most researchers tend to think about it. So I think that there are, there are no important questions asked. It's, it's, it's partly po political, you know, that we are heading towards this uh, climate disaster catastrophe where meat has to be excluded from the diet. And then they try to find uh, a lot of uh, funding goes into research which tries to identify uh, harmful compounds in, in animal foods uh, that, uh, that cause uh, this disease or that disease or contribute to this uh, disease. I think it's a bit more complex uh, because when you 
I, I just uh, posted very recently that uh, uh, what happens on an animal based diet and they find uh, various compounds uh, that are increased and then the animal based diet is basically a McDonald's uh, menu. Uh, is that an animal based diet when you eat uh, buns or, or covering your meat and then you have your fries and then you have your coke and and, and everything and then of course you have uh, perhaps two uh, burger patties uh, in the middle but is that an animal based diet really or 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 it's or it's not i wouldn't say it's an animal based diet because uh, evolu from an evolutionary perspective if i go out uh, for hunting then i uh, i don't know why we, we as a team uh, hunt down a um, whatever a deer or, or or a large animal because that's that's been uh, characteristic of human hunters uh, for uh, hundreds of thousands of years uh, and we hunt down a deer and then we eat the deer and we may eat a uh, few berries which the women uh, gathered during the day uh, as as dessert but uh, is that that's an animal based diet because uh, the the huge the, the big majority of your calories or, or, or the, the volume of the food is uh, com comes from uh, the animal. But uh, a McDonald's menu is not an animal based diet, it's just uh, stupidity. And uh, pinpointing any one component from complex uh, meals or meal patterns uh, is just uh, enormously stupid. And uh, most of this research comes from uh, this uh, nutritional epidemiology of uh, of uh, food frequency questionnaires mm -hmm. where they ask people a uh, hundred of questions about what what did you eat yesterday and and how much of this you ate yesterday and and uh, the, the last week and last month the year before and this kind of question i cannot really tell what i had last week not to mention last month it's it's it's, it's very stupid